We're very fortunate tonight to have all of the candidates who are running for Congress uh, for the 11th district seat. And uh, we're going to have each of them have two minutes for their opening statements. And then if anyone does have any questions, I ask that they go ahead and send those up this way. Uh, we'll start with um, Bob Barr. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank you all for being here this evening. And thank you so much for the cables for once again performing such a tremendous public service of opening their home, their farm, and their resources to further the debates uh, and public education uh, for important public offices. My name is Bob Barr. I met many of you, including our law enforcement officers here, several years ago when I had the honor of serving as President's Reagan, President Reagan's United States Attorney. I also had the honor of working with many of you during those years that I was honored to serve in the old 7th District as a representative in the Congress of the United States. Now folks, there are six candidates up here for the United States Congress in the 11th District, and we've heard from a number of other candidates for public office, and we'll hear from a number of candidates also following our presentation who are running for the United States Senate. Now one of the candidates here, now one of the public officials here this evening is the enemy. The enemies are in Washington. Yeah. They are Harry Reid. They are Nancy Pelosi. They are Barack Obama. They are Eric Holder. Those are the enemy, and that is where we need to keep our focus. As a former member of Congress who has served for eight years up there fighting President Clinton, impeaching him, fighting against the liberals, balancing the budget, cutting taxes, the one thing that differentiates me from these other fine candidates is not the fact that I can say I'm conservative. We can all say that. We can all say it truthfully. It is not that I can say this group supports me, that group supports me, and some other group supports me. That's not what differentiates me. What differentiates me is I have been there on your behalf. I have fought the liberals. I have defeated them. We balanced the budget. We cut taxes. We reformed welfare. We protected our Second Amendment rights. It can be done. I ask for your help. Send Bob Barr to Washington to complete the job that we started years ago, and that is to defeat the liberals. Thank you. Thanks, candidate, is Gary Loudermill. Good evening. I want to thank everyone for being out here today. I had some prepared remarks, but I just want to talk to you. This is the most critical election in the history of our nation. Shortly after I announced I was running for Congress, which wasn't an easy decision because we have a very close family, I was speaking at a high school baccalaureate service, and the pastor was going to introduce me. He came up to me and said, Barry, I know that you're not here campaigning for Congress, but let me ask you one question. In one sentence, tell me why you're running for Congress. I simply pointed where my kids were sitting. I said, because they deserve better than the government we're passing on to them. Travis, raise your hand back there. Travis is my oldest son. In, a, in about three weeks from now, his wife is due with our first grandchild. That grandchild deserves an America that I had growing up, and we're not passing it on to them. That's the only reason I'm running for Congress. Now, you've got a critical decision to make. Who will go and stand for those principles and those values that we hold so dear in America? You know, growing up here in Georgia, my parents instilled within me some values that we pass on to our children. And those values are simple. Put God first in everything you do. Serve others before you serve yourself. And standing for what is right isn't always easy, but it is always the right thing to do. As I took the advice of my dad who said never complain, if there's something you don't like, do something about it. I took uh, my experience as a husband, a father, uh, an employer, an employee, and a United States Air Force veteran to the state capitol where I consistently, consistently stood on those values of faith, family, and freedom. Because of that consistent stance, I have been endorsed by most every major conservative organization in this nation, including Senate Conservatives Fund who named me the number two candidate in this nation, simply because I have the courage and I still have the courage to stand for those principles that made America great. God bless you. I need your vote. May 20th, Barry Loudermill. Thank, Thank you. you. That concludes the, um, the opening statements. We're now going to have a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, the first one, uh, and we'll start uh, with uh, Mr. Barr, is will you accept congressional retirement? Will I accept 
Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, they, there, there's a lot of misinformation out about there about congressional retirement. I mean, congressional retirement is something that as a member of Congress you pay into, like federal employees and, per, and private sector employees into retirement programs. I mean, sure, I think any candidate gets up and says, I don't know whether I misunderstood what one of the candidates said that he wouldn't accept congressional pay. Sometimes he says he wouldn't uh, accept congressional pension. You know, these are just, this is just political talk, political nonsense. Uh, the fact of the matter is what's important is somebody, sending somebody to Washington that doesn't have these silly sound bites that actually has a proven record of having voted for balanced budget. That, has, that actually achieved a balanced budget as we did in 1997 that actually voted and worked and accomplished cutting taxes. These are the things that are important. This is what we ought to be focusing, not sound bites about congressional pay or congressional pensions. Thank you. That's, thank you. Same question to Mr. Barry Loudermill. Well, that's a, it's interesting. I was asked the other day about congressional pay, and I paused. Uh, when the uh, reporter asked me about it, and they said, you paused, I said, yeah, because I just found out how much Congress would made. I had no idea. I had not even looked into what the pay is. I don't even have an idea what the pension system is because that's not what I'm running. I mean, if this is the, the, the most pressing issue that we're going to talk about this campaign, we have an $18 trillion debt that is a national security issue. I mean, when you look at the rights that we're losing every day, our children deserve a better future. That's why I'm running for Congress. As far as the pension system, in any pension system, if you pay into it, you ought to be able to get your money back. I'm sure uh, the colonel here retired from the military. I'm sure he's got a military pension that, that he's living on. I mean, I have nothing against pensions, but it should be equitable. It should be fair. But we have so many pressing issues in this nation today that must be addressed first. Thank you. All right, this is the last question. It's a long one. Um, Everyone talks all the time about what they want to do about our $17 trillion deficit, but what about our $100 trillion unfunded mandate? We'll start with, start with Bob Barr. The, uh, the, if you go to the website for the National Debt Clock, uh, you, it almost uh, makes you dizzy watching the numbers that go round and round and keep increasing. It never goes down, it keeps going up. And it's uh, approaching $17.6 trillion and change right now. Uh, that really is simply the tip of the debt iceberg. Uh, the unfunded mandates, which push the total figure of money that the federal government, that we the taxpayers, are liable for well over a hundred and by some estimates two hundred trillion dollars. Uh, you attack you attack that the same way you go after the seventeen point six trillion trillion dollar debt. You simply start. You can't go ahead of that and all of a sudden start attacking the other. The question's kind of silly. It's all debt. And what we need to do is what we did when I served in the House on your behalf previously, and that is to stop a rogue president uh, in his tracks by not passing a single one of his spending bills, force him to the negotiating table until we can get rid of him in January 2017 Thank at you. the latest. Thank you, Bob Barr. All right, question goes now to Barry Loudermill. Again, this is one of the most pressing issues that we're facing in this nation. We all talked about at the end of this fiscal year, we're going to have an $18 trillion debt. That's just from Congress's deficit spending. Let me give you an idea how much that is. If you were to go back to the birth of Christ, and every 60 seconds put away $16,000, every minute since the birth of Christ, you still wouldn't have $18 trillion today. When we look at the unfunded mandates, we're somewhere between 60 and $100 trillion. The only way that we're going to fix this problem is one, improve the economy by reducing government regulation, get government out of our lives, get government out of our pocket, get government out of our businesses, and let the businesses create the jobs that need to be created. Two, we must curtail Congress's inability to balance its own budget through a constitutional amendment to balance the budget. We have to give some transition time balancing by the year 2030 and then force Congress into cutting its spending and with any surplus pay off the debt. That's the only way that we're going to do this and also through tax reform through things such as the simple tax which will actually put into place private measures for uh, our retirement, Social Security, and Medicare. Medicare. Thank you.